G'day everybody, welcome back to our playthrough of Starfield. Now in the previous episode we have landed here on, I believe this is the planet Crete, or actually maybe it's one of the moons of the planet Crete, but uh, anyway in front of us is a research facility full of pirates apparently, and uh, we're gonna have to go in there and actually take all of them out so that we can move on and jump away without being followed. So uh, let's proceed and try and do that, shall we? The Crimson Fleet is a confederation of smaller independent pirate crews, all flying under the same banner. They are typically unscrupulous and violent. Ah, oh, okay, great. That's, that's brilliant news. Well, you know what? That just means that we can be violent against them as well, so simple solution. Uh, I could potentially go through this entire area in stealth if I wanted to, or the entire game in stealth if I wanted to as well. That is provided I'm good enough to do that, but uh, I don't think that's really the kind of playthrough that I'm going for. Um, I am going to try and uh, go in guns blazing, so to speak, but I mean, I will try to use the element of surprise when I can, um, but yeah, I, I definitely want to focus on using pistols, uh, as I mentioned in the previous episode, so... No sign of pirates just yet, um... Curious. These are United Colonies markings, but we are in Freestar Collective space. It then stands to reason that this was once a secret UC facility. A secret UC facility. Okay, interesting. So we've already been introduced to a couple of factions here. So the UC, United Colonies, and uh, I think he mentioned the Freestar Collective. So, and they seem to be at odds against each other. And this is some kind of a covert United Colonies base. Ooh, okay. The Gravity Paradigm. Is this a book? Yes, it is. Truth is, what our scientists didn't know back then could fill volumes. The focus, of course, was on wormholes and not only creating, but maintaining a stable and sustainable uh, Einstein-Rosen bridge. That was the goal, the end point. No one had even considered that maybe that was just the beginning. When we looked at grav drive technology today and the ease at which we fold space and travel light years in seconds, it's sometimes easy to forget the impossibility of what we've achieved. Dr. Josephine Inatu's seminal work continues for another 535 pages and has become the most highly respected text on grav drives and grav jumping ever written. Interesting. You know, I'm guessing this game is going to have quite a lot of different books and, uh, you know, different things that we can read. And uh, in terms of whether or not we're going to read everything, well, you know what, I'll probably pose that question to you guys. Uh, I, I kind of want to know what the preference is. Uh, I don't mind reading everything, but it might get a little bit boring for some. So, yeah, I mean, this is a lot of reading right here, guys. So, for the time being, I'm just going to let you guys sort of pause where you need to and you can have a read in your own time but uh, if I do see a lot of comments in uh, the comment section down below saying that they do want me to read different books and all that sort of stuff then uh, definitely leave some comments uh, down below about your preference and I'll uh, you know try and accommodate. Um, let's turn off the flashlight there. What's going on here? Reminder. Run. Okay. Bad People, Bad Jokes, Volume 2. Okay, why did the chicken cross the road? Huh? What's a chicken? Okay, that is definitely a bad joke. Knock knock, who's there? Planet? Planet who? If I throw a party, will you help me plan it? <laughs> okay, well, let, let's move on, shall we? Um, yeah, so, a couple of books already. I might actually read things that are, you know, not too long, so if it's like half a page, for example, we'll, we'll read that. Or if there's something that might be, you know, story related, then we'll read those as well. Oh, God. Jeez, that scared the crap out of me. Um, what is this thing? A 
heat leech. Can we scan it? Okay, it doesn't look like it. It, it doesn't seem to be interested in us though, so... I mean, I'm gonna leave it alone. Um, but interestingly, I think the scanner is actually picking up all these different items as well that you can interact with. That's really cool actually, because uh, that means, uh, you know, you, you'll be able to use it to just make sure that you've interacted with everything that you want to interact with. Uh, helps you from missing things, basically. Like, I would have completely missed this little thing down here if it weren't for scanning. And, uh, with games like these, you know, like, the devs could hide things everywhere, really. So what's this? Med pack. I'll definitely take that. Uh, just gonna be careful, as I said, about picking up absolutely everything, because, uh, I feel like inventory management's going to be a bit of a, an issue if we did that. Uh, actually, speaking of, let me just quickly check here. Ah, yes, here we go. So, we've got 47 out of 135 mass at the moment. So, I think that's gonna quickly become a problem if we picked up everything. Soil box. My life, chunk by chunk. Uh, I was very young, only seven years old when I realized humans are animals. Smart animals, sure, but still animals. You give us food, we'll eat it. We want it to taste good, and we want it to stop our hunger. Those two things, that's what's most important. After that, sure, some people want their food to be really healthy, as experts say, and some want it to be pretty. But most people, they just want to cram something into their face. And that's when the concept of chunks was born. So begins the 120-page autobiography of Fred Blombard, founder of the Chunks Food franchise. Chunks Food. Okay. I'm guessing that could be maybe some something that we see as part of the world. Chunks Food products. Take those bullets, thank you very much. Ooh, what do we have here? Cred stick. 168 creds. Thank you. More digi picks there. I like it. Alright, let's move on. Still no sign of any of these pirates, to be fair. Oh, dead body here. You wouldn't realize. Chunks egg. Okay, here we go. We've we've got chunks already. Um we'll check that out a little bit later. Boom pop root beer. Alright. History of Xenobiology. The first several chapters of Lars Nilsson's work seems to focus primarily on the digestive systems of alien herbivores. The dissection Sorry, dissection of Dr. Lerd's latest find revealed a creature that was just as she suspected based on its outward appearance, an evolution of the microscopic hydrothermal worm. But her research also suggests a species that evolved in distinct stages, possibly growing significantly as it did. So the question now remains, which version of the creature did Dr. Lerd dissect, and what maximum size could it possibly achieve? The subsequent passages deal with Nilsson's fascination with the predatory wildlife of some unnamed world. Okay, interesting. I like how games like this really flesh out the world that uh, that they've built, you know? Um, makes it a lot more real. Um, anything that we can loot? Desktop organizer. Maybe not. Yeah, there's not too much. There's plenty of clutter everywhere. And sure, we can probably sell all this stuff, but... Uh, I think I'll focus on picking up things that are going to be... That are going to be useful. We definitely have pirates here.
Okay, we'll, we'll try and maintain the element of surprise here. mind me as we just steal everyone's food here. Snack pack. Protein bar. Restores five health. Absolutely. Take that. Ah, oh, what is that? But why can't I get to it though? Can I open this thing? Oh, yes I can! Oh, but that's really awkward, isn't it? What? <laughs> How do I keep the oven or the microwave door open? Anyway, I, I think I'm focusing a little bit too much on trying to get little bits of food there. Maybe it's not so important. Beer? In a carton? Okay, that doesn't sound very appealing, but I'll, I'll take it. Space Rogue Muscle Gear. Sure. Okay, we're gonna have to go through these pirates right here. Oh lord. Good one, Vasco. Well done. Yeah, most of the time uh, in Bethesda games the companions are kind of useless, but uh, he didn't do too bad there, so happy about that. Take the rescue axe, sure. Uh, I have no idea what an AMP is. Kraken? Okay. Now, uh, I know I did say that I'm going to focus on pistols, guys, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to ignore other weapons completely. Uh, I figure uh, we can definitely just give weapons a try, at the very least, uh, and then obviously go back to pistols because that's our focus. Uh, let's just use a scanner, make sure that we're not missing anything here. Full food spiced worms. Okay. Sounds disgusting, but it gives us five health, so why not? Mochi. Yes, please. Love me some mochi. Sparkling water. Yep. I don't know if focusing on, like, picking up foods and stuff is the right answer here. Maybe not. Uh, speaking of foods, actually, maybe we should take a look at the foods that we have and actually consume some of it. Um... So carrot restores two health. Oh. <laughs> that barely did any uh, any healing to us, but I suppose if you have a lot of foods, uh, you can really just use a whole bunch. Action use minus twenty percent O2 for three minutes. Okay, sounds cool. I might keep it though. Uh, full food spiced worms. Yeah, we'll we'll eat all of that. We'll eat the mochi as well. So all of the water packs seem to give us like this additional buff that reduces oxygen consumption, maybe? Um, a lime? It's kind of random, but okay. <laughs> I'll have a lime. Okay, we managed to restore some food. Almost to full. Um, 
I thought something was on the loose that what terra morph or something like that but uh, I guess those pirates were like listening to some kind of a recording or something lender base okay that's very random chunks choco sure Space Espressos, I love it. Starlocked board game. Actually has decent value. Well, I think it's decent anyway, but it's people seem to like their board games. What is this? UC Battle Meal. Multi-pack. Restores 20 health. Plus 8 carry capacity for 8 minutes. Oh yes, please. That seems pretty powerful. Um Before we proceed, let me just backtrack a tiny little bit here. Okay, we've got a computer. Um, let's just do the looting first. More spiced worms. Yummy, yummy. Alright, what do we have here? Entries. New beginnings. I can't believe it. I got the posting. The United Colonies Xeno Warfare Division is now official. I can't even imagine the amount of red tape they had to cut through at mast. But it's long overdue and I get to be part of it from the ground up. My official title will be Associate Xeno Biology Technician and I ship out in three days. Amanda is upset but I assured her I'll have plenty of leave and will be back in New Atlantis all the time. I'm still not sure where we're going, definitely somewhere in United Colonies space. Guess I'll find out when I get there. Hmm, interesting. Candidate 1. We got our first extraterrestrial candidate today. What appeared to be an alien form of, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce this guys, but Luca Lecog Venusta. Uh, essentially a giant spider. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> uh, Michelson in full protective gear attempted to attach the neural control interface or NCI. Our security detail is still trying to remove him from the cocoon. Oh, Lord. And we had no choice but to put down the creature. A minor setback. None of us expected success on the first try. I heard Dr. Paulson tell the others that a detachment of United Colonies Marines is scheduled to deliver another creature next Thursday. Okay. So doing uh, experiments on aliens, I suppose. Ashta specimen. I'm not sure how they managed it, but the UC Marines actually managed to bring us an Ashta. It's not that the Ashta is a terrifying beast and natural predator. Those are both exceptional and wonderful qualities and essential to the work that we're doing here. It's that the Ashta is native to the planet Aquila in the Cheyenne system. Aquila, home to Aquila City, capital of the Freestar Collective. Leave it to a group of ground pounders to grab a candidate right from the enemy's backyard. Though it does, uh, it does beg the question, have Freestar Collective scientists managed the to weaponize their greatest natural predator. If so, our timetable just got accelerated. Hmm. Okay. Trial failure. Any fears that our Freestar Collective counterparts have managed to weaponize the Ashta have been completely dispelled. After the Michelson debacle, we determined the NCI should only be attached under full sedation, so that wasn't an issue. The problem started immediately afterward. The Ashta proved incredibly resistant to synchronization and we never achieved control fidelity beyond 47 percent. Dr. Chin's arm was nearly ripped off five minutes into the first trial. In short, the Ashta simply cannot be controlled. If not by us, then certainly not by the Freestar Collective. Dr. Paulson has been in touch with Colonel Kasarov. Looks like the Marines will have another species collected and dropped off by this time next week. Right, so they're trying to control these uh, aliens, I suppose. More disappointment. Another creature, another failure. No fault of the UC ground pounders. We wanted a predator, and they delivered. These things were so alien. Paulson had a difficult time deciding on a designation. Opted for Raptan's Venom. Shame we couldn't properly sink the NCI. These things 
would have been spectacular, especially the poison. Okay, uh, this is almost giving us a a little bit of a taste of what's to come, I suppose. I, I'm, I'm guessing we'll probably run into some of these uh, alien species at some point. New specimens. Marines dropped another few specimens off this morning, totally unscheduled. Best way to describe them? They are arthropods, the alien equivalent of Hamaris gamaris. Basically, giant space lobsters. Uh, lobsters. Very promising giant space lobsters. Okay. Uh, I'm not entirely sure where the UC grunts found these particular test subjects. Some godforsaken backwater rock, I imagine. After the third or fourth unsuccessful trial, I stopped asking. None of those earlier species could be controlled with any reliability. As noted in my earlier logs, their natural aggressiveness made them effective weapons, but a bullet is less than useless if the gun keeps turning itself on the shooter. But these new creatures possessed a perfect natural disposition, non-aggressive, even docile, yet capable of defending themselves with deadly efficiency when threatened. And when they do go on the attack, they're terrifying. So we'll see. And last entry here, relocation. We're moving, packing up shop and transitioning the entire operation. It's happened so fast, my head is spinning. The work on the arthropods has been so successful, we're actually relocating to their homeworld. We'll have an unlimited supply of creatures for the Xeno Warfare Division. I've been named a senior Xeno Biologist. That means I'll be running the entire facility. My first instinct was to tell Amanda. I'm still not used to her not being there. Okay, so maybe they broke up or something. I'll give uh, Michelson credit. The guy really went to bat for me. He let the mast brass know that it was my work tuning the neural control interface that was instrumental in controlling the arthropod. I guess Paulson is being forced to retire. Good, uh, good riddance. Okay, bit of uh, workplace competition there. All right. Oh, this is interesting. So, yeah, I'll definitely read stuff like this, guys, where it makes sense uh, just to get a feel for what's going on in this facility. Uh, but I guess these guys were doing experiments on aliens, uh, and we saw the word Xeno Warfare there. So I'm guessing they're maybe planning to use these aliens for the war effort or whatever. I, I don't really know if we're at war or whatever, but... Starlocked, okay. Board game. Uh, ooh, we've got a safe. Nice. And a digipick. I'm guessing this is the game telling us to uh, give the, uh, the safe cracking a try. Fill in all open slots in every layer to open the lock. Select a key and rotate it until it lines up with the gaps in the security layer. Slot the key to fill in the gaps. Uh, each key can only be used once. Uh, righto. Right. Right. Uh, So that fits. Huh. Uh Okay. That that seems to fit like that. Then, I see, so there's another layer underneath it, and we might need to use these for whatever's underneath. Like that, maybe? This is kind of confusing. Let me see here. So these definitely fit, right? But I can't seem to get stuff to align for the lower layer. 
Unless we're going with something like that and then... No. Okay. That's not gonna work. Um, that fits. And that fits. Like that. Uh, so maybe we can use this for the lower layer. So let, let's check this. So this one is looking good. Yeah, okay. I think that's gonna work. So... These two for the outer layer. And these two for the lower layer, I think. So let's give it a try. Okay, wow. Explosive Rattler. What? I mean, it's a handgun, right? So we're allowed to use this. <laughs> uh, why don't we take everything? And uh, I might switch to that, actually, because uh, we know what the Eon's all about. Why don't we try this one? I'm glad there's no, like, limit or, like, there's no prerequisite level to use items. So that's quite nice. So yeah, we'll, we'll check this out later. We only have 14 bullets for it though, so we might have to switch it out pretty quickly. We've got some cheese here. Let's take all the cheese. Uh, battle meal pack. Yes, I, I do like those. Shielded lab outfit. Yep, yeah, I'll take that. Uh, I sort of like taking armor and stuff like that, or armor pieces, because... Generally, those things sell for quite a bit of money. I'm just going by my experience with, like, Skyrim and stuff, because technically this is Skyrim in space, right? So, let's just continue looking around in this area. Snack pack, apple bites, yes. Bandages, yes, I'll take bandages. Uh, bullets, a Grendel, yes, and an Eon, more bullets, I like it, another battle meal multi-pack, and again, something trapped within the microwave. Uh, if I can figure out how to actually open the microwave, that would actually help. I mean, I can sort of open it there, but as soon as I let go, it just drops back down, so... Um, that's, that's gonna bug me for the entire game, guys. <laughs> anyway, let's, uh, continue. Frag grenades, I like it. Med pack. Ooh, okay, actually we do have pirates right here. Oh, what? <laughs> Ooh, okay, I see more pirates coming in, actually. Or... They might be above us, actually. Forget this. We got better stuff to do. Okay, I'm surprised that they didn't hear the big explosions there. Got another pirate over there. This weapon seems really powerful. Am I supposed to find one of these things pretty early on? I am picking up faint signs of life in the area. Okay, well, they know that we're here now. Nice. One more. Alright. Nice. 
Uh, so those random explosions that happen when we're fighting the pirates, I think maybe I have accidentally managed to like hit them in their oxygen tank or something like that on their backs. Uh, could be the case. Anyway, I'm just quickly backtracking here because I don't want to miss any sweet, sweet loot. So let's look around. Hazmat suit. Sure, I'll take that. Medical sample tray. And I really love the amount of clutter that's around, but it does make it a little bit difficult to know uh, what you need to really be focusing on, right? So there's that. But definitely helps, you know, make the, the world feel a little bit more lived in. Uh, what is this? A Grendel again. I'll, I'll take, you know, things every now and then, like repeats of stuff. Um, but not absolutely everything. More dead scientists. Oh, wow. Okay. Something managed to break free out of this place. Um, maybe this is what we, uh, heard before in that recording. The, I think it was called a Terramorph. Threads, yes please. Heal paste. An injector. Okay, I'll... I'll look, that's right, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> Whatever that is. If we don't need it, we can sell it later on. I mean, I'm just assuming that we'll sell it later on, but... Um... Making sure to check every single corner here. A plushy Galacticat. What is this? <laughs> Alright, uh, made some kind of strange noise there. Maybe it's an Easter egg. Um, as you know, with like Fallout, you could find like bobbleheads and stuff. But I guess the bobbleheads in Fallout actually had a use. Um, Another Grendel there. I think I'm not going to worry about another one. Um, got a computer here. Um, if Vasco wants to move out of the way. <laughs> Come on, Vasco. Good work, mate. Weapons case. Uh, Rattler. Sure. Heal paste. Yes. Let's check out what's going on in here. Project Pet Shop. My staff and I... Just arrived this morning, and I'm not surprised to find the facility completely operational. As usual, the United Colonies spared no expense. It's all very exciting. Inspirational, really, knowing you have the full support of the decision makers. I have to admit, I was surprised to learn that the lab is a closely guarded secret, located in Freestar Collective space no less, but we go where the work takes us. Xeno Warfare is the evolution of armed ground conflict. We know it, and the Freestar Collective surely knows it as well. Forget what the calendar says, this is 1942 all over again. We may as well be the Manhattan Project, racing to create the game changer before the other side. So to that effect, I am overjoyed to officially announce Project Pet Shop Phase 1 is a go. Cool, alright, yeah. So as I guessed before, they are trying to weaponize these aliens. The arthropods are, in a word, incredible. Calm, easy to work with, and they even allow themselves to be fitted with the NCIs without much trouble. Synchronization has thus far been nearly instantaneous, and their control fidelity has remained in the 95 to 97% range. They've passed all environmental uh, survivability tests as well. Hot, cold, low, or no oxygen. I'm pretty sure these things could operate effectively in any environment. Most promising is how well they've already integrated with the Red Devils, who have joined us for a period of extended training. After all, they'll be leading the creatures into combat, so it's critical they establish a war bond. Interesting. I'm guessing maybe we'll come across these Red Devils at some point. 
After months of testing a variety of extra uh, extraterrestrial species, I am overjoyed to report that we have finally found a species that will serve as the backbone of the United Colonies Xeno Warfare Division. The arthropods are everything we hope for and more. Imagine a pack of alien beasts suited to any terrain capable of instantly obeying any command. I have designated these beasts obi it, obi <laughs> obedientes pez, but we just call them stalkers. Stalkers? Uh, didn't we fight a stalker outside of the facility before? Anyway, uh, I think it might be time to crack open the bottle of Chateau Avignon to 2170. I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly. I think I may have butchered that. So, uh, the Red Devils. The Red Devils' progress with the Stalkers have been nothing less than amazing. Now I see why they're so highly regarded in UC military circles. None of the rah-rah bullshit you see with regular grunts. These are focused professionals. After another week of training here in the pet shop, I'm confident they'll be ready for live test in the field. Michelson suggests I contact Colonel Kasarov to find out where his marines grabbed that spider from the, uh, the early trials. He wants his comeuppance, but then it would make for a good trial. Hmm, there you go. Uh, let's move on, shall we? Structural material. Okay, that's kind of a vague item. I'll leave it for now. Oat clusters. Uh, we'll, we'll take that. We'll take food. Pirate charger space helmet. Sure. I'll take that. Uh, how are we doing for weight? 80. Alright. Not too bad. Uh, if we get pretty close to max, I'm going to check with uh, Vasco to see if we can actually, like, you know, get him to bring some of our stuff, because that's what you used to be able to do in, like, Skyrim, for example, or uh, maybe the Fallout series. Uh, Maelstrom. Do I have a Maelstrom? I'll just take that. We've definitely got a Grendel. Weapon case. Wow, okay. An Equinox. Yes, let's take that. Laser cartridge. Experimental analysis of selected clone cell. So I guess this is the arthropod that uh, they've managed to uh, quote unquote tame or control. Meal pack, eggs, onions, and tomatoes as well. Uh, I think we've got a lot of food at this point, so why don't we just eat some more? Uh, cheese, yum. Chunks egg, let's eat that. Chunks potato, full food spiced worms, yes. Uh, onion. I wonder if there's any, like, cooking in this game, because I've seen a lot of, like, raw ingredients already. Uh, meal pack, eggs. Alright, look, we've eaten enough, I think. Uh, but I wonder if there's maybe a perk that we can get that would let us heal more from bits of food that we find. So I think that could have been a thing in, I think, like, Fallout 4. Okay, not much of interest here. Anti-microbial. Um, I don't know why this thing has a notch on the side, uh, and whether or not that might actually mean that it's more valuable. This has two notches. Analgesic, analgesic. Uh, I'll take these, <laughs> just, just because they had those notches on them, but I have no idea what we'll need them for. Uh, perhaps maybe we can sell them for a bit of money. Nothing here. Listen up! Someone trying to jump our score. Hold them off here. I've broken 
Something sits up on the roof. I'm on it. No one's getting through. All right. So it sounds like they've set up some kind of a uh, defensive perimeter or something. Let's actually go in and check our weapons here. I might actually switch to something else just to mix things up. Uh, so I've seen the Grendel quite a few times. Ah, oh, here's the Kraken. This is also a pistol. Um, so yeah, we might give that a go at some point. Uh, we are doing 11 damage with this pistol though, so <laughs> I quite like it. Um, but yeah, maybe let's just give the Grendel a try. Uh, at the very least, we can say that we've, you know, given different weapons a go. Something's out there. Oh, I think we got detected. Yes. Not the greatest position here. Peace is no longer a viable option. You've already lost. Find an agent for your center of mass. No way. Can we melee? I think it's Yeah, there we go. Systematic wandering. I like it. Um, I think that's all the pirates in this area. Let's just continue with our looting. And there's just so much stuff, isn't there? Um, I mean, I do like having... Ooh, nice, did you pick? Uh, the ability to scan and look for things, but it does break the immersion a little bit, doesn't it? I'm going to try and, you know, switch it on and off every now and then. I won't keep it on constantly. Testing one. Okay. Locked door, actually. Um... Okay, this obviously doesn't fit anywhere outside. Or does it? Actually, it does fit this. Um, so that could work for the outer layer, I think. And then these two can be used for the inner layer. Let's go with that. Very nice. Okay. Yeah, getting the hang of how the uh, digipics work. Ooh, okay. I just heard that pirate. Alright, I guess he was hiding maybe in one of the rooms? Gotta be a little bit careful here. Alright. Okay, another computer. Let's check this out. War. We're at war. By establishing the colony of Vesta, the Freestar Collective have forced the UC's hand. The unmitigated goal, thinking they could establish control over a fourth star system. Such a flagrant violation of the Treaty of Narion. Our diplomats tried to resolve this peacefully, but the Council of Governors wouldn't listen to reason. Apparently they claimed that Vesta was not a colony, but rather just an insignificant farming outpost. Nice try. By all accounts, the Red Devils and Stalkers worked in perfect unison, and the results were everything we could have hoped for. No Red Devil or Stalker casualties. Vesta's defenders were apparently taken by complete surprise, which greatly contributed to their fatality rate, which was 93%. Goodness me. This is a great day for the Red Devils, a great day for the United Colonies, and a great day for Xeno Warfare. Note, no, this is not lost on me that this classified facility is actually located within Freestar Collective Space, 
So goes the great game. <laughs> All right, phase two. It's finally time. After a number of successful missions with the Red Devils, the Stalkers have proven to be exactly the weapons we had hoped for. So it's time to expand our operations. MAST has finally approved the next stage of this facility's operations. Project Pet Shop Phase 2 will now commence. Stalkers. We've officially stopped work on the Stalkers. There are enough creatures in the field to serve the Red Devils who haven't been here to train in over a year. If they need more, we can easily gather some uh, gather some from the planet and fit them with NCIs. But from this point on, our focus is Phase 2. Heat Leeches. Throughout the settled systems from civilized worlds to backwater bush towns, pilots have had to deal with the nuisance known commonly as the Heat Leech. I had my own unpleasant experience four years ago at the new Atlantis spaceport. My transport was delayed while the deck crew removed a few of these filthy little things from the aft thrusters. They are attracted to heat, feed off it through some endothermic process, so thrusters are the perfect place for them to hide. They can take a full afterburner burst with no ill effects. No ill effects on the heat leeches, that is. A ship with an infestation can generally expect a 3-5% to drop in thruster efficiency. Working with the heat leeches have been very interesting, if not entirely satisfying. We have 11 of them in the lab, and by all accounts they are completely innocuous, save for their heat siphoning properties. But what if there was a way to weaponize them, perhaps artificially enhance their heat siphoning to completely and instantly disable a ship, or even better, to somehow reverse the process so that they transfer their own heat into a ship. Someday, today, I fear, we lack the means to do either. Okay, so they're trying to weaponize the heat leeches. Interesting. Creds, we'll take that. 215. Frag grenades. Frag mines. Anything else? Well, there is this safe, so let's try and unlock it. So we've got three digipicks remaining. So far, we haven't really failed, which is good. I'll try and keep that streak going. So that looks okay. That looks okay as well for the outer layer. Now it's just... A matter of unlocking the second layer. Uh, so yeah, these two for the outer layer, these two for the lower layer, hopefully. Um, let's go with that and... I think that works. Let's do it. Nice. Uh, disassembler Eon. Nice. Okay. We're finding some really, really cool stuff already. So we'll definitely use all of that. Alright. Let's move on. Uh, what is that? Synthameat hamburger. Sounds delicious. Blue collar off work hat. Sure. Now, uh, what were you protecting? Spiced worms. Yummy. Com relay and lubricant. <laughs> I have no idea if we would actually need these things, but you know what? It was protected in a storage box, so I'll, I'll take it. Okay. Nothing of interest. I feel like we could just spend ages trying to look for all of the things. I mean, if you were a hoarder, this game is terrible for you, because uh, you would essentially be just aimlessly taking everything and coming back, selling it off, and then coming back again, taking more stuff. 
Um, did we do every single room? No. Ah, nothing here. All right, let's go. This is one of the cages that they've been using for a lot of those aliens. This is Hayden Wynn, uh, the guy that we've been sort of reading all of these computer entries for. Uh, a couple more digi picks there, very nice. Okay, got another computer. Uh, and what is this? Dr. Wynn Emergency Slate. It's loose. The Terramorph is loose. We can't stop it. When, when we tried to sync with the neural control interface, it just completely flipped out. Broke through its containment chamber like it was made out of paper. It killed Michelson, Cobb, and Sumatri in all of one minute. I'm, I'm not even sure where it is now. It took off deeper into the facility. A, a security detail went in after it, but good friggin' luck! When I know it's safe, I'm going to make a run for the comm relay. Try to call in the cavalry. This is Hayden Wynn, lead xenobiologist. Wishing he had gone to dentist school like his parents wanted. Oh, wow. Okay. So, I'm guessing maybe the pirates didn't kill all of these people. Uh, maybe it's the Terramorph that did it. Um, I'm not entirely sure if this guy died from, you know, pirates by the look of him, so <laughs> let's have a read here. Terramorph specimen. Thanks to the UC ma Marines, we now have the second piece of the puzzle, a fully grown alpha predator. According to my research, a group of astrogeologists made first contact nearly a hundred years ago on some remote moon. The creature didn't appear to be indigenous and was alone. There is currently no record of how it got there, so it was sheer cosmic chance that the astrogeologists found it. Or rather, it found them. Scientists were quick to categorize it. Uh, Ocicio Machina, roughly, killing machine. The UC Marines tasked with taking it down chose a simpler name, Terramorph. I read the official record once of the eight-person squad. Only two of the grunts survived, and one of those two lost a leg. Such an exciting time to be in Xeno Warfare. Okay, that's one way to look at it. NCI fitting. Today, we fit the Terramorph with the NCI. If our experience when the grunts first dropped off the creature is any indication, our sedation window will be around 15 minutes. We'd better make them count. Alright, I guess they stuffed it up then. 161 credits, I like it. Oh, okay, it was locked. I didn't even realize. I wonder if there's a way to actually tell if something's locked or not, because uh, I believe as soon as you attempt to unlock something, uh, you're already using up, like, one digipick. I think. Uh, that doesn't fit. Maybe... Maybe this one. Okay, that fits like that. Okay, so these two are in the right spot. Let's go with the lower layer now. Um, that looks okay. That looks pretty good as well. So, let's do it. Very good. A little bit of extra ammo. I like it. Um, speaking of extra ammo, maybe I should change to another weapon just so we can try something else. So we picked up this Equinox, so we'll give that a go. We just picked up some more laser uh, cartridges, I feel, so that should 
I'm detecting Help. a safe nearby. We could make use of whatever is inside, provided you had some digi picks and a disregard for personal property rights. <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, God. Jesus. All right. I wonder if you can sort of fight these things and if they're difficult to fight, but it does say that this is a level one alien, so I'm guessing it's not really too tough. Uh, got all the foods in here. Bullets. Uh, meal pack. Distilled water. Some more digi picks. I guess this is the, uh, the digi pick tutorial. go. Um, let's just quickly scan the area once more. Yeah, okay, this is the only thing left. Let's give this a try. Again, we sort of already know what we're doing here, so... Uh, yeah, that looks good. And then now, just the lower layer, that looks okay. Huh. Hang on. This might be a little bit trickier. Wait a second. Um, does that work? Yeah, I think it does. Alright, let's do it. Very good. Nice, another one of these Rattlers. Um, I'm not entirely sure if this is better than the one that we have, but let's just keep it for now. We are going to use this uh, laser rifle for now. Of stuff here. Uh, veteran deep mining space helmet. Yes, please. Another digi pick. Adaptive frames, sealants, fiber. You know, I have no idea what all of this stuff does. Um, how's our weight looking? 116. Getting very, very close. So, um, let me just go to our inventory here and I just want to take a look at this helmet that we picked up. Actually, we picked up a few helmets already. Oh wow, a lot of them look quite cool, but I'm just not entirely sure about looking like a pirate everywhere I go, so. Veteran deep mining space helmet. Um, so I guess this looks similar to what we've got, but just gives us better stats overall, so. Um, we'll take that. Oh, something's appeared here. So O2 is consumed with exertion, such as sprinting, melee attacks, and jumping. Okay, fair enough. Uh, okay. Do I smell a boss fight here? You gotta be kidding me. The Frontier has a new captain? You working with Barrett, or did you pry the ship keys out of his cold, dead hands? Um... What's your problem with Barrett anyway? We don't have a problem with Barrett. We want that ship, the Frontier. If you're the captain of it now, that means we're after you. Uh... You know, we might be able to protect Barrett by claiming that we've killed him. Oh no, you see, we weren't really after Barrett. We're after that ship. Oh, okay. Every All right. Crimson Fleet Rook hears about the Frontier. That constellation keeps treasure hidden in the cargo bays. The loot from a hundred planets. That statement is partially correct. The frontier has been to many planets and moons, but the only things held in the cargo bays are spare parts, dust, desiccated food particles, and a variety of species of ant. 
I don't care what kind of lies <laughs> Barrett programmed that robot to say. We're taking that ship. Uh, Persuade? There is no treasure in my ship. Cut your losses before more people get hurt. You're not talking us out of this score. To persuade a person, you need to make successful choices. Choices can range from kind words to distractions to threats. Each choice has a difficulty. The higher the difficulty, the greater the chance the choice fails, but the more points you'll earn when you succeed. You have a limited number of choices you can make, but you can never fail if your last choice succeeded. Alright, interesting. Um, we've got three turns, and these are the numbers uh, corresponding to you know, how many points we get if we succeed, plus the difficulty, or actually, I see these bars here, maybe we need to sort of fill up the bar or something. Um, let's see. I just made it past your entire crew, you really want to try your luck against me. <laughs> Uh, maybe we go with this one. Hey, if you don't want to trade, uh, sorry, if you want to trade ships, that sounds good to me. The frontier creaks when it turns anyway. You're willing to give up the ship? Just like that? Uh. Yeah. And you have it wrong, man. Constellations and Explorers Group. They aren't treasure hunters. They aren't? You sure? Can't believe this. There isn't any treasure? We've been trailing that old constellation ship for nothing. Get out of here. Take your robot and your ship and get out of here. I see you all again. You're dead. Ooh, we okay. should now be free to travel to constellations headquarters without Crimson Fleet interference. Nice. Well, uh, I guess we're smooth talkers then. Uh, we managed to talk uh, to talk our way out of that one. Um, I guess they're not hostile anymore. So. Can we just look around, if that's the case? We see you again. You did. Yeah, yeah. I thought we were definitely in for another fight there. Just making sure that there's nothing hidden away. Alright. Uh, fast travel to your ship, press F uh, to open the scanner, look for the ship map icon of your ship and press E over it. Okay, so this will teleport us. I see. Uh, let's not do that just yet, guys, because uh, there's still a few sections here that I want to just check out. Again, uh, you never know where this loot might be hidden away in, so... We'll try to be thorough. Looky here. We've got coffee bag, red harvest, amber ale, sure. And rye and wheat. Yes, we'll take everything. There's stuff down there. Whoa. Yeah, I guess it's low gravity here. Deep mining space helmets. I think we've got one of those, so I'll take the med pack. And that's it. Um, and then there's the upper platform there, so let's check that out. Nice weapon case here. Okay, it's another Grendel. Um, you know what? Since we're here, we'll take that one. Okay, I think that's the place looted, guys. So let's try this fast travel thing. Um, so hover over the icon and press E. Yes. And... Captain, to reach the launch, we must jump to the planet Jemison in the Alpha Centauri system and then land in the city of New Atlantis. Do not worry, this will all become second nature before too long. Let's take off. 
Yeah, it's really nice actually. Um, I like how you can just teleport instantly back to your ship when you need to. So. Alright, so there was something there about fast traveling directly from the mission menu. So, select missions in the bottom section. Missions, yep. Toggle which quest is tracked on your HUD. Only one que uh, quest can be tracked at a time. Select the name of the quest to expand the list of open objectives. Select any objective in the quest to track the whole quest. You can press the set course button to automatically navigate to your active quest objective. Okay. Here. Rav jump to Jemison. Press R to automatically plot a course to your next objective. Ooh, okay, nice. So we're in Narian at the moment. We need to get to Alpha Centauri. So let's do that. How do I jump? Oh, yes, here. Grav jump pending. Power up. Grav drive. All oh, right, so we need to put some energy in grav drive. Let's uh, take away one from lasers, maybe, or a couple. Does it matter how many we put into grav drives? I don't know. I don't know what difference that would make if we put one or a few. Perhaps maybe it speeds up the uh, the counter or the countdown to grav jumping. Possibly. Starship Frontier, this is United Colony Security. Maintain course and prepare to be scanned. Scanning in progress. Scan complete. No contraband detected. We're cleared for landing at New Atlantis. Very nice. No contraband. I'm guessing uh, we could pick up contraband and uh, if we do get scanned then we might actually have to fight like security forces or something like that but anyway uh, so we're here at uh, is this Jemison already? We just take a look here at the star map. Um, I think we're here. Uh, let me just go to the objectives again because I'm not entirely sure where we're supposed to go. Land at New Atlantis. Okay, so we set a course. Ah, okay, right. So in the planet view, we're going to have to basically find where to land, select it, and actually land. Um, I think we did that last time we were at that moon before. Just doing a quick scan here. We've got five different resources. Interesting. Alright, well, let's land. Okay, let's exit. Alright, and it seems like we've got a bit of a greeting party here already, so... Wow, look at this place. Alright, this must be like one of the like central hubs or something like that, but uh, anyway guys, I think it's been about an hour since we started playing in this episode, so I think this is probably a good place for us to take a bit of a break. And when we do come back, We'll uh, continue with the main story objective to try and find a constellation, I believe they're called, and uh, I think it says something there about needing to go to uh, Mast District. We've heard about Mast before, uh, but we need to go to the Lodge, whatever that is, so uh, we'll definitely come back to that once we uh, start with the next episode, but uh, I think I'm going to call it here. Hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Leave a like, a dislike, or a comment or two down below. Stay true, and I'll see you guys 
in the next one. Bye.